is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Glass Cannon Fraudcast, the only podcast that deals with history's most infamous instances of fraud. I think I'm in the wrong. I think I'm in the wrong Zoom chat. <laughs> Kate, I believe we left off last week with you. What is your favorite instance of historical skullduggery? What? <laughs> Can you define skullduggery? Because like, how would you Don't be it? coy. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, skullduggery. Is this something I'm going to regret Googling right now? <laughs> no, Don't no. image search it. Just, yeah, just find the definition. A bouquet of dicks pops up. Or, <laughs> um, skullduggery. I think, a bouquet, I think if it's in a bouquet, it's quite lovely. <laughs> a bouquet, by the way, is seven or more. <laughs> like a murder of crows, <laughs> bouquet of dicks. <laughs> I actually, I actually did just read about an instance of historical fraud that apparently is still ongoing, which oh. is the, the largest uh, automobile theft in global history. Do you guys know this story? No. You, you ever hear about this? Is it McAllen, you know Texas? You know this one? <laughs> it's not McAllen, Texas. It is. Uh, did you read about um, this news? North in the seventies, North Korea ordered like a thousand Volvos. Uh, and they were shipped, and they were they were shipped to North Korea, and then Volvo sent them a bill, and they just ignored it. So they they just oh. ignored the invoice, <laughs> like it was Columbia House Records. <laughs> <laughs> so they just <laughs> for now fifty years, North Korea has just been, and they and they every, and I think they send like two invoice reminders a month because they're accruing interest. <laughs> so every 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 two every every two invoices, they just ignore it. <laughs> and it's up to like three hundred million dollars or something. Yeah, what, how do you enforce that? Like you exactly. Yeah, <laughs> this reminds me of the Simpsons episode with the trillion dollar bill. Oh yeah, <laughs> now give it back. Give what back? <laughs> give what back? Oh, what? oh, uh, Mr. Burns. I think we can trust the president of Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> So how's everybody doing, huh? It's a uh, Thursday night, um, and it's actually Thursday night. <laughs> we're we're recording this while another show airs. Um, is there, did everybody have a good week? It, it's not over yet, so if it wasn't a good week, don't be bummed. You still got one more day. <laughs> so positive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over yet is what I'm saying you get a buzzer beater on Friday right <laughs> salvage the week <laughs> you get a nice email on Friday oh well, that's good <laughs> yeah you never you. get a nice email at 5pm on Friday but <laughs> maybe speaking of a uh, speaking of a buzzer beater I mm. had uh, a good week <laughs> and this is gonna be so this might be material for the Degenerate Dungeon uh, which is our sports betting uh, random show on the GCN Employee Lounge and I, uh, I made a, a bet this week that I really believe is the most degenerate of degenerate thing that I've ever done, <laughs> which is I was missing football and I was like, I really would need to bet money. <laughs> and I picked an NBA game between the Oklahoma City Thunder and some other team. And I don't know any players <laughs> on either team. And I picked three players I've never heard of. And I just bet they're under and parlayed them. <laughs> And I hit the bet the next morning. I found oh, out. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> <All right. laughs> I was just like, let's see if knowing something matters in betting versus not knowing anything. Turns out, doesn't matter. In fact, right. knowing something might be your downfall. So I'm going to keep putting it. this to the test. Yeah. Was yeah. Like, was Joe, the, I think uh, this might be an object lesson for many things in your life. <laughs> <laughs> what, was well, the, uh, what were the odds when you parlayed it? Uh, plus 360 or something like that. Yeah, so I good. bet five bucks and I won like 18. It hey. was fun. It was wow. fun. Winner, winner. Yeah. Chicken dinner. <laughs> so I'm rolling hot this week. I know. <laughs> Going Stakes into the O'Brien tonight after the show. <laughs> Champagne at the after party. You get like um, one really nice cocktail with $18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would yeah. not be able to afford the mushroom toast at the new low boat house. 
Well, thanks for running me down, Matthew. Now I'm sad again. <laughs> you got to just I'm saying you got to get in there. <laughs> you you got to parlay that again. Oh, yeah, you got to parlay you that. The, uh, lay that 18. So you can test. treat yourself to some mushroom toast. <laughs> We, uh, I was going to say this before the show, but I thought it'd be fun to say during the show, we were just given a lease to our new recording space. Oh, yeah. All right. We have not signed the lease because it's 300 pages long <laughs> and I'm not going to read it. Um, but uh, we've got the lease. It looks like things are, are moving and we will be, uh, we'll be moving in pretty soon. Awesome. So exciting. So excited. Skid, your feelings, your thoughts on recording in person again. <laughs> I am so excited. I can't wait. I, I was actually just in the neighborhood today where I believe the space is. I love going back there. I'm so psyched to have a, an excuse to go back there more often. I, I'm beside myself with joy. <laughs> now it's a good week. This now, is it's good. Good. It's now it's a good week to push this over the hump into being a good week. I'm so excited to see you guys in person because I think about, you know, the way my brain works is when I remember things, I look on my camera roll on my phone yep. to remember like dates of things mm -hmm. because I can't keep it all in my head. Sure. Um, and there is a hilarious picture of Skid on my phone from the last time <laughs> we were in the studio, RIP in peace. And uh, it's him pointing at the whiteboard and the whiteboard <laughs> just says, fuck. <laughs> his collar is like upturned. He looks disheveled and he's like smiling and pointing at the whiteboard. It's right well. before the whole city shut down. And I think it's the yeah. funniest photo. <laughs> God, it's going to be good. I mean, we play together on the road, but we haven't even been on the road in a couple months. So. Uh, be good to get back on the road soon. Uh, we're, we're almost ready to lock in some dates. And then, uh, yeah, moving into the studio. I just can't wait to play in person again. Yeah, very so, excited. So funny uh, whiteboard thing. So Skid, when we go to these live ven venues for the live shows, if you don't know about this, he writes on the wall in really like, small, <laughs> weird handwriting. Like, like bands, childish handwriting. Like, like childish handwriting. <laughs> He writes, he just writes, because it's it's where everybody's name is, all the bands and all that stuff. And he just writes, Glass Cannon, C-A-N-E-N, <laughs> for some reason. Everywhere. So then, so then when we started the text chain for the new crew here for this, like updates and stuff like that, that's what it's named. And so it's come up, you know, like a bunch of my phone. So I was filling something out for the lease and it <laughs> auto-corrected the company name to Glass C-A-N-E-N-L-L-C. -E and I didn't oh, no. catch it like on the first pass. It was like the second pass. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's auto-correcting us to that new company name. So well, I yeah. have to say the reason I did it is because you go into these venues and like, you know, I think it started at the comedy club. The Helium, right? Yeah, Helium. 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 Yeah. And but everyone like not this is year, just like, like- the year before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like everyone, there's all these comedians, like big, drawing their name all big, like Brad Williams. It's like, <laughs> like trying big <laughs> fancy things. And so I just tried to do it in the most pathetic possible way. <laughs> and it just makes me laugh. I just seeing it in contrast to like all this other stuff makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> I'm glad so I caught on. Dumb. It, you've really mastered a like really pathetic script. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's not even, we're not doing it justice in saying it looks like a child. It looks like a child that's been writing for a while. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like it's, it's, it's a very child neat, legible, or like, or like, yeah. I like it to think of it like as you're like, like writing with your off hand, on like <laughs> really yeah, concentrating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to think of it as like Comic Sans, but if it was like a sad font. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Comic Sans was depressed Sans, depressing yeah. Sans. Old. That's what it is. I feel like Skid, you've mastered like a particular streak of humor that's like taking the piss out of something, but only for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. no, it really. Was a joke just for me, <laughs> something for me to enjoy. I'm glad that anyone else finds it funny. So that's, that's a win. Well, uh, here's a joke that uh, I think we can all enjoy. Let's check out last week's Roll Twenty real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Kate was pointing this out pre-show. It's just such a uh, cornucopia of nonsense. When you look at the screen here, you get the Ring of Fire. You've got this giant uh, womp. You've got a Triceratops with a catapult on its back. <laughs> Some sort of weird drawing here. I think it said hey, but I've now eliminated it. Now it just looks like a sentient cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so all these statues, a little poppet. People are off the map. It's a real, it was a real humdinger of a uh, combat. It got out of control. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, 
It really did. Like, just just <laughs> drop somebody in this map with no context and be like, tell the story of what <laughs> happened here. <laughs> uh, I mean, I especially, of, of all the things that are obvious and wild, it's also just so funny that these enemy pig, bug, spider things that are on the other side of the fence are lined up four in a row. <laughs> just like a wall of them standing there. Waiting. What were yeah. they doing? Well, they <laughs> look like showgirls. They look yeah, yeah, they're like they're to camp 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 right. ready to dance in their shoes. <laughs> if, yeah. you haven't, if you haven't seen a womp kick line, you haven't seen a kick line the way it's meant to be. <laughs> you haven't lived. Beautiful. You haven't lived. Um, well, you know, we got, you guys succeeded. I, I can't, I can't believe you did. And it really, it was the ring of fire. That was the big, uh, turning point because it kept most of these womps from not joining the battle. So even though Ethel went down, you were able to protect him within this ring of fire and keep the, you know, four out of six womps away. And although the ceramic guardians, uh, only one of them went down, uh, you were able to, uh, chop off one of the womps foot feet and uh atticus awoke now we could spend 30 minutes playing out what happens to you make a death set do you make this? i'm not doing any of that this is what i think we see i think we see atticus come to and you know, this is the first time you're coming to not on the boat you're coming to back in the woods uh where the stardust augers uh joined you uh at a distance uh in the nude to watch you perform your dreamland excursion ritual. So you come to and uh, you look up and there's just a, a dangling man next to you. That's like, are you, are you all right? You survived. Yes. Yes. The others, are they awake? And he's looking around at the group. No, no. And we've sensed great trouble. Um, please uh, stand. Trouble stand where? Back. Trouble here or there? Trouble in their minds. Uh, we, we've seen uh, the battle. We've seen your journey, and and we must help them now. So, are you are you okay? Are you in your right mind? Yes, yes. I was I was able to escape unseen, uh, and wake up before they even knew I was there. The How others, many fingers though, am I holding up? <laughs> Sixteen. <laughs> All right, you you are fine. <laughs> <laughs> that actually was sixteen. I am a bad man. Yes, <laughs> I think it was like <laughs> <laughs> it really was. You were like five 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 four. <laughs> All right, stand back. We must um, help Dead ease, ease the... your hands on me. That wasn't my hand. Oh, stand back. <laughs> <laughs> Please, we don't, uh, we don't know what state they'll be in. And uh, the, the remaining Stardust Augers just come around uh, your companions uh, as they either wake up or died in the Dreamlands, and they they uh, do the same thing to you uh, that Hadrana Ibren, the uh, the leader, the de facto leader of the Stardust Augers, did when they reached into your mind and removed madnesses. They're just sort of preemptively doing this as uh, Ethel and uh, Eris and Aldo and Suki are coming back to the forest. They're just they're sorting through, and maybe some of you had madnesses, and maybe some of you actually made it out alive. <laughs> Find out in a flashback scene later that has no bearing on the outcome of this game. <laughs> they ate me. They ate me piece by piece. <laughs> and they kept me alive for it. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Ethel, how many fingers am I over? <laughs> 21. Damn, this crew is good. <laughs> <laughs> They're all right, Adana. None of them are mad anymore. <laughs> I wonder if anyone has ever thought of that before. <laughs> I've never heard of that joke before. That's a really good joke. How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> like, really test them. Like, really test them. 27. That's, yeah. that's, that's how they know. Good. Um, so Hadrana comes and she's, she's putting her robe on. She's like, we, we saw everything. The, the ring of fire. The illusionary womp. The little doll. Your friends falling, the, the ceramic guardians, the gas, we could see it all, though probably not exactly the same way you saw it. Were, were you able to retrieve uh, that which you sought? Atticus looks down at his empty hands. Yes, I, I believe so. What are you... What are you looking at? I thought it was there for a moment, but I always forget... It does not return with us, yet it is in our possession in the dreamlands. That seems to be how it works. Ah, yes, we have heard of this issue. 
that that which you claim in the dreamlands does not come back with you. Is it true that when you return, all of these things are in your possession? Yes. At least they have been in, on all of our other excursions. I hope this one is still there. But I feel confident I had it. Yes, it is there. Fascinating. Well, let us rejoin your friends and the others. It has been a, a long night for all of us. And uh, we gotta go. Suki, so, yeah. this fire, it was truly incredible. It was something. You saved me. Up until the point where it went away and then they ate me piece by piece. <laughs> right, well, I died. So it was incredibly sorry. painful. Sorry I couldn't keep it up, but I don't know if you saw, I turned into a big dinosaur and then I died. I didn't see any of that, actually. Right, was... you're in the wall of fire. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. But you've done it before and it's always very impressive, I'll say. Very Suki, impressive. Suki is, like, very grateful that you are saying this and then you just see like tears are just coming out of her eyes your eyes are wet did you go oh, swimming that coming out of your face what no and she just kind of like tries to like rub them she's like very clearly crying and she's like oh. fine <laughs> did you just like eat some like bad mustard or something no I don't think so I think I'm fine thank you thank you all Oh, I see. She's crying. Crying? Yes. What's that? Ethel. Yes, Ethel well, was like, I was I'm wondering. Crying. It gets fluid. <clears throat> yeah. Is this an emotional <sighs> crying? Or is this is a food related thing? It's not food related. Sorry. The allergies. Why? What is? What is? Why are you crying then? Did What's someone scare on? you? Were you uncomfortable with our nudity? She's like laughing at Eris. <laughs> Did someone scare me? Did someone? Um, <laughs> She's too used to dealing with children. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she. Did someone <laughs> dealing with. <laughs> right. She knows how to yeah. deal with them. <laughs> Take care of them. Uh, she she looks around the Stardust Augers, who she appreciates, um, but she kind of turns back to the group um, and she says. When we traveled down the staircase, did you, for a moment, did any of you end up elsewhere before we entered into the graveyard? Mm, no, no, only in the other part of the city with the ghasts. You weren't there, though. Yeah, you There's were... always a part of me that's back home with my ex-wife and kids. Oh, oh God. Uh, make me cry from <laughs> not like that I don't think she meant like that Ethel sorry sorry just okay. yeah you were you... late you didn't show up for uh, several I don't know minutes or so, something I believe I was trapped um, in a different dream I suppose or, or nightmare I was wondering if any of you have ever experienced uh, a crossover or bleeding of dreams you've had past dreams that you've had that have reappeared as motifs or symbolism in, in your travels in the dreamlands? I had a dream once. I had a dream of living a quiet li a life of quiet desperation with my, uh, my family, I, as I again, called it then. I don't think that's what she means. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, I have not. I had dreams. Nightmares even I couldn't explain before we left on this excursion on the boat. When we began visiting the dreamlands, I never saw crossover between the things I'd seen before and the new places we'd gone. This new place you went to. Can you talk about it? It may be relevant to our journey. I don't, I don't think that it is. Um... It's a dream I've had many times. It's a personal dream. I think I was distracted when we were doing the ritual. I think I, I made a mistake. I, I don't think it was supposed to happen. But I apologize for my emotional outburst. I, I feel very affected by it. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll do better. I'll, I'll focus better. No, no. It's only natural. I mean, this is quite a harrowing sort of thing we do I mean 
And we are dealing with powers well beyond any of our understanding. It's quite possible that it was chosen for you to go to this place once again and see what you did not want to see. Suki raises an interesting question, though, in all, in all seriousness. So she went to the wrong place this time. Last time we went, we all went to the wrong place. We ended up on that ship. Is this process stable? Is it? Um, are, we, no. are we getting worse at it? I think I can say confidently the process is not entirely stable. It is rather erratic and chaotic. Not entirely stable. I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. <laughs> <laughs> what is take that from? Take the professor in the back. <laughs> take the professor in the back. Talk about the hyperdrive. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right. It's like <laughs> sometimes I don't understand human behavior. <laughs> well, I'm only trying to do my job. Um, but this is all. This emotional uh, connection to this other dream. That is all you feel. The Stardust Argus cured you of any uh, lingering uh, mental effects that occurred from your death in the dream. It is unrelated to that. Yes, it's entirely unrelated. This is, I just hadn't thought about it in a very long time. Um, sorry, I, I've never talked to anybody about it. We're a pretty I, open group. You should feel free to bring any of this to any of us at any time. No, no, no not. absolutely. Yeah. We should all feel free to raise any of these. Uh, we should we should feel open and, and safe. This is a safe space to discuss our emotions. And I've been telling Werner about my dreams for some time now. Ha really? Yes. Oh. I don't know if he's always there or paying attention or awake, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Yeah, he's not. I don't. He doesn't actually speak a lot of English, so it may be sort of uh, pointless. But I'm, no, no, I'm I glad that it must you be therapeutic points. for you, though. Ethel. Comfort. Yeah, that's that's great. Indeed. Uh, uh, if we may, I think we have urgent business to attend to. We perhaps have all of our trinkets that we're going to get, and we must at once seek an audience with the mad poet. Of course. Exciting. <clears throat> Suki. Lock it up! <laughs> <laughs> She's crying. She's just crying. She's, cry out, Captain. She's crying out. I was like, no, this is a safe space. And that, because she's just like, shut it down. No, shut she, she says, she says you know, turn it off. Perhaps, like a perhaps. light switch. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> this is a safe space. Uh, she says, um, <laughs> perhaps we could talk about it at a later time. But Atticus is yes. right. This is a safe space. Don't pollute it with your nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> safe space. Don't go sharing your shit with everyone. And bring this down. We have enough baggage. I would love to hear the baggage and the nightmares. <clears throat> yeah, I have baggage I'd like to share as well. Uh, kind. Uh, I need variety in my baggage. <laughs> I need variety in my so, baggage. Fair enough. It's a lot of the fair. same baggage with Ethel. <laughs> Yeah. What are you I supposed know. to change bags every so time you get to a new airport? Yeah, it's not so much baggage as one bag. Yeah. It's just yeah. one bag that you keep carrying around and showing it. Sometimes before I go to bed, I make a little wish prayer, whatever, to the Babiaga, and I just hope that you experience a different traumatic event at some point. <laughs> I mean, I was just eaten alive. Okay. Limb by limb. That's a start. <laughs> That's a and start. then told to lock it up as soon as I woke up. She's listening. <laughs> so uh, you you wait, intimidate. Question, yeah, question about saying. this mad poet fella. Oh yeah. Um, never met him. Sounds a little suspicious. Should I be ready to kill him at a moment's notice? I don't think you'll be able to, Ethel. I think for the first time you're going to find a foe that is beyond your capacity to destroy with a swing of your little axe. I've also got the hammer. Oh, yes, the hammer uh, as well. No, the Mad Poet is an enigma to us to us all, but to my knowledge, is not an enemy we can possibly fight. I think I understand. Uh, We're supposed to go and make a safe space for him, just like we did with Suki. Exactly. So we're going to arrive. Yes, and, say, and I believe okay presenting, us I think presenting feelings. these gifts will uh, <laughs> prove that it is indeed a safe space to share with us the knowledge that we need to find out who Aldo and I really are. Can we share knowledge with him? Like, for example, if I wanted to tell him about the time my dad took me to the, the county fair. 
I'm I'm sure that I don't know, Ethel. Just ask him yourself when we <laughs> where's get there. The, where's I don't. the boat? Should we be getting back? <laughs> yes, I, I said that several yeah. minutes ago. But no, let's <laughs> just <go>. reiterating. <laughs> boat. We're just like sitting in the oh, woods boat. alone. The yeah. augers are gone. The augers are, like long gone. <laughs> they left a while ago after. <laughs> they tried work. to say goodbye, but we were talking too much. <laughs> they were like, anyone <laughs> seen the augers? All of a sudden, it's like a, a whole crew of freaking like panthers starts surrounding us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, didn't they always money? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, no, th- this is all a walk and talk as you're berating oh, okay. Suki. And uh, you you eventually get back to camp, and the plan was to spend the evening uh, there and then set out in the morning. And okay. uh, Skywin is pretty, uh, is pretty clear, like, we're not staying here for a week. It's like you can spend the night. It might be good for the crew to have a little time uh, off the ship. Um but we're leaving first thing in the morning. And even though you had this whole adventure in the dreamlands, no time passed here uh, hmm. in the uh, real world. So it's still nighttime and it's uh, even later by the time you get back. <clears throat> but uh, there's still a couple people still hanging around. Um, did you ever play Red Dead Redemption 2, anyone? Yeah, of yeah. course. Fuck yeah! I just I, I have just it on my computer, it. and at some point in twenty or thirty years, when I have a when I have a, a free moment and an empty nest, I would love to play it. It'll right. still be a good game. Yeah, one, it will. One of my, I mean, there's so much to love about that game. But you would sometimes have, like, the community would move to a different area, your little community, and then sometimes you would show up there, and there'd be a party going on, and it was like oh, a legit yeah. party where everybody was drinking and getting out of control, and you could drink and overdo it and like stumble around, talk to everybody and learn new new things about them, maybe open up some side quests. But eventually, like in real time, the party would like start to die down, and then you'd just be walking around. There'd be like three or four people still up, like still drinking. Maybe you could play cards. It was just, it's unbelievable how realistic it was. And so that's what I'm thinking of when you get back. Like maybe when you left, it was like, and now it's just like a couple of their their people. And the senator is there, right? Like this is where we're leaving him. Yes. And his uh, entourage. Yes, and his entourage. Uh, Okay. Yeah, so you're leaving him, and and he is passed out with his uh, with his people. Uh, you see, most people are asleep, um, but there's still a couple of the augers up, and uh, even some of uh, Skywind's crew. In fact, most of Skywind's crew they uh, they needed a night like this. Yeah. Uh, even though they have not aided you in battle at all, uh, they are exhausted from their uh, their journey. It's been. 60 plus days, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't I say 64? Oh, he's definitely yeah. over 60, yeah. Yeah, so uh, so this is real nice. And uh, even OJ's having a good time. And you go to sleep. You wake up the next day, crack a dawn, <laughs> and, uh, and you make your way. You say your goodbyes. Um, the senator once again tells you, make sure you go to the, the temple of Abadar or whatever I said, and, and you'll get paid. And then the dock master will, shall have something uh, waiting for Skywin as well. Uh, so he again, thanks you so much for saving his life, for taking a chance on him, the Stardust Augers. Um, they're, they're a little uh, weird. They were weird last night. They're even weird now and they're goodbyes. It's not like a big, oh, it was great to meet you. Thanks for coming. They're just more like, they're, they're a little wary of you because you've crossed over. And that's something that, uh, even though they've dedicated their life uh, to dreams and to Desna, they've never crossed over because they know the dangers in that. And so they, I think there's a, uh, a bit of a fear there, a little apprehension that maybe you're, uh, you're touched now. By what? So, by the dreamlands the, the dreamlands the tainted, the tainted. yes you, you've had this impression that's been left upon you um, from your time there and from your journeys there and and even though you've been cured of the madnesses that you received upon death there's this lingering stain that they uh, I think that's that's the kind of vibe they're giving off it's like well good luck in your journeys be it here or in the realms beyond you have a friend in the Stardust Augers, and they all just kind of meld back into the trees. You go back to the ship. Does anyone else feel like they're kind of weird? 
I mean, I know we're kind of weird, but they're kind of weird. Oh, I quite uh, like them. It's unsurprising, detached. Mm. They live in uh, somewhere in between. Not quite the dreamlands, not quite this world. They can't decide where to just go. So yes, it does not surprise me that they are strange, but they certainly do not remain rooted in any world. I mean, you could say the same about us, couldn't you? Yes, but I, for one, want to remain rooted in this world. I only go there to seek answers to how I can become more rooted here. Have you I guys have no ever desire considered? to go to the stream to the dreamlands beyond what I have to? It's actually an interesting question. You, Aldo. Do you have a desire to go to these places when you don't have to? I think we're a bit odd too, but I think we're cooler than they are, just generally. You are cooler, not by much, but you are for sure. No, I mean, they, they're like sort of a bit off-putting. I think we, we're just like generally cooler. No offense, Atticus, but you're lying to yourself if you tell yourself that you have no interest in exploring the dreamlands after having visited. Right. It is just so utterly, strangely dangerous at all times. I don't know how there is a civilization there at all. In any place we go, there is no dream where people are happy. There is no, no dream where there is prosperous. Yeah, Everything isn't is there destroyed. Like a nice place, isn't there? Nice dreams. Are there any nice dreams in these dreams? I like think everyone that the we bad go to is a nightmare. Follow your group around. I think I don't know why, but I was having a fine time trying to figure out how to do my thing uh, before I met you guys. And then suddenly I saw a Cthulian mythos beast. Um, and every time I go in there, we're, we're fighting. And yeah. Well, maybe it's us. Like maybe we're, we're drawing it on onto ourselves. Oh, that's it's like what us. they say about being in a room. And you, if you can't find the person who smells, the person who smells is probably you and you should look inward. Yes, well, I think it's a little bit more logical than that. We are after these powerful artifacts. We seek to find things that are bring great danger, or, or of great power, and thus bring great danger. Where are you, Eris? You just uh, dreams of just beaches and palm trees? Well, no, that's not typically what... I don't think children dream of beaches and palm trees. I was trying to find like, I don't know, like a fair or like ice cream truck, but then I ended up at that like weird party. Um, I stayed there for a while because, you know, girls got to have some fun. And then. <laughs> but no children. Fighting happened. No, I never ended up figuring that out. Mm. Well, so, I mean, chin up. We'll find you some children to victimize one of these days. Well, luckily. Suki's crying. Suki's crying again. <laughs> I kind of figured out with the. I'm actually not supposed to be eating the kids. I'm just supposed to be um, like taking their souls and collecting them. Similar to she holds up the poppet. She doesn't like explain further. She's like similar to. Uh -huh. And <laughs> she goes. Well, luckily, also, I'm not sure if if egg dies in the dreamland. If he dies, they die here or not. But I don't need another soul right now. So mm. we're right. good. Eris, I have been meaning to, to thank you uh, uh, again for uh, for uh, that the reaching out and the, the saving of my life after Rasuki saved my life. I, I heard I was in a dark place, and I heard your voice, and I, I I just felt this great and overwhelming instinct to go towards that voice. And I just <laughs> just want to thank you for that. It was uh, you didn't need to do it, so I appreciate it. Oh well, you're welcome anytime. Mm, wink. <laughs> Although in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have done that because then you were torn apart while conscious. That did happen, but and I wasn't at the. I wasn't until just now thinking about it that way. But um, it was the thought that counts. <laughs> and what what thought was it? We really need another person to help us out right now, and you were down. We need another person. We. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's like turning weenie. a little red. We need. She puts her weenie. hood up. What about you need? All of what us. What about you need? What about you need? I mean, <clears throat> you all didn't need any more help. You were concerned that your friend was on the ground, surrounded by a ring in, of fire. I put him in a ring of fire. I, I assumed he was fine. <laughs> I just love this idea that we 
all know that Eris has a crush on Ethel and she won't just admit it. It's amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> she turns away. I, I whisper to Aldo, it's so romantic. I mean, yeah, I, in, a, in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. It's Come on, cute. Yeah. <laughs> we have business to attend to. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Back to and, the boat. Uh, as you approach, they go, people, people. And the crew, they got, even though they went to bed after you, they were up and back to the ship before you. And they see you coming and they're just yelling, people. Oh, it's just our friends. And uh, <laughs> that's the watch. The watch. <laughs> people. 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 That's the alarm call. People. <laughs> <laughs> it's just our friends. And uh, they uh, send out a little rowboat and uh, bring you back. And you're back on the ship. And it's, <laughs> it's, da- <laughs> it's daytime. Um, now, you have successfully retrieved six out of the seven items that that you know that, that Lyle's was after. Now, you don't know if Lyle's got all of them. You don't know if Lyle's got any of them. But you know that in searching his books that you took from Iris Hill, um, he was after these things. He he did his research and he knew that, like, if he was going to go speak to the mad poet to get some sort of knowledge, he needed to present these gifts. And so he was in search of these gifts. And you know that he spoke to the mad poet. You have six of the seven. When you met the Yellow King... Uh, when you first took your trip to the Dreamlands and and found yourselves at the abandoned uh, caravanserai or caravansary, depending on what coast you're from. Um, Did we determine that's a coastal thing or is that just smart people and dumb people? If you go to Google (laughs) and you say, click pronounce, it says caravanserai. Really? Yes, I know. It's crazy. Well, Both of I'll them just sound say, weird. I'll just say I've only ever seen the word ending in a Y. This yours ends in like AI, right? Or yeah, AI. It? Yeah, and it says, that's how it says. That's what it's, it says in the book. But anyways, when you spoke to the Yellow King, uh, who was like a figment of Lowell's that s- split off and was left behind in the Dreamlands, uh, he said, "Find these gifts, and when you find them, come back here, and I will lead you to the Mad Poet." Right. So when you are ready, be it tonight, tomorrow night, any night, you have to do these rituals during uh, during nighttime, you can take the Dreamland Excursion Ritual again and go back to the Caravanserai to speak with the Yellow King. Is this just... <sighs> Did we ever hear anything about a Yellow King before that guy? Or did we only ever hear about Carcosa? Mm. Um, well, you know that um, the cult that was operating in uh, Thrushmore, uh, they were cultists of Hastur. Um, and so you know that one of the names Hastur goes by is the King in Yellow. Now, whether that's tied into, you know, the, this fragment of Laos calling himself the Yellow King, it does seem a little convenient. So it's just... So it's just, he he is a figment of the king in yellow, and we're bringing him all this shit, and he's just going to take our souls. You don't think he's a figment of the king in yellow. You believe he is a piece of Laos. Troy. A piece of Laos. <laughs> he was draped in yellow, and he says, I am the yellow king. So he took yeah. Laos' soul, and now he's going to take ours? Yeah, exactly. It's just, There's a great it, danger involved, period, because you don't know what the yeah. hell you're getting into. You're exactly. bringing gifts to a, a figment. I just don't want to be like, uh, I just don't want to be that stupid if there is a a legitimate chance in front of the character of Atticus that he could like suss something out here. But there really is, this is the only path forward in the adventure. There's no other path forward. We have to go to this guy. We could just go home, take our gold, and maybe you want to go in on it with me on a a, a certain business. We could just go to this city. Maybe just an idea, dollhouse furniture business. Yeah, that as, sounds great. As I said, there's no other path forward in the adventure. We could, yeah. Sure, we could choose we could to stop adventuring. The adventure. Yeah, we could. And open up a doll shop. It's just dolls, right? Dollhouse furniture, you know. We Dollhouse dolls. furniture, and then Eris can make your dolls. I'll make the and dolls. It'll be, so it'll be a joint business. Do you need the children's souls to make your dolls, or can you just make the dolls? I can charge extra for the ones with souls in them. 
she says brightly. <laughs> and she smiles like real big, just like I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel sees the business opportunity. He does uh, He does worship Avatar, Avatar, but he's then he's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, just to okay. refresh your memory, because it's been a while, the way that he described himself is that he believes himself to be a fully formed entity, while at the same time also a piece of the being known as Laos. But why? Um, Hmm? I'm sure we asked him at the time. How did he split off? Um, was it an event that occurred right after he met the Mad Poet, that Laos met the Mad Poet? There was a splitting, a fracturing of his person, of his consciousness? Or yeah, what, what sort was it of before that? Lyle yeah, he do, believes uh, that Laos learned some great truths from the Mad Poet. And the truths were so mind-shattering, a mind was shattered. Okay. And the Yellow King was left behind. Very Is this cool. what they refer to as going clear? <laughs> yes, he's... Yes. They checked his Thedon levels. Um, and <laughs> OT level. level zero. Now, here's the thing. For Atticus, it's, it would be right for you to be apprehensive because you've uh, you've studied this sort of eldritch, um, these eldritch tomes. And so you hear Yellow King, and you're like, wait a minute, wait. This, this, is, this is what he does. It's trickery. I'm being beguiled. And it would be a great trick. So there is a fear there, but you, like you said, there's really no other option. There is no other option. And I think Atticus has to be confident in the strength of his own mind. That's He just has to have confidence in that and believe that he, he might get duped, but he has to believe he can stand toe to toe with the mental prowess of, of whatever this is and fight through it. He has to believe that. Otherwise, what's the point? Wait. But Suki, Suki chimes in as we're talking about this, and she says, Why can't we trick the trickster? Why not dupe the dupes? Can we create fake objects? Can we, can we trick him in some way? Do we have to just walk up, hands open? Yeah, Atticus, didn't you make an entire giant red-footed beast? Couldn't you just fake the last item? Or It was brilliant when you did it in the battle. Yes, but no, the illusions are meant for creatures with out perceptive minds, for creatures that aren't able to see through such things. Uh, my powers are quite limited in the grand scheme. I feel that I could trick a golem, yes, but I don't think I could trick a, a fracturing of Lao's mind, who has already experienced the, the mad poet. In other words, he probably has an incredibly high will save. Right. <laughs> um, but no, but yeah, for real. It's just like those magics may seem very powerful, but you would easily see through them with uh, even a modicum of mental prowess. So, no, I wouldn't trust illusions to go up against this yellow king or even Lowell's. Um, But perhaps if it is not such a, you know, if it is, if we are not being fooled to the extent that we will be utterly destroyed, then we will learn from it. And I could get stronger. And I could learn the very magics that they use. And that will put us in a position to get the things we really want. Which are? Well, for one, your wife back. What did you say? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel is like so rest up, like, Ethel. Like, it's time to get her back. He like gallops across the room and like gets in front, gets in that. He's like, what did you say? <laughs> say it again. Say it again. <laughs> um, so while you decide if you want to do it tonight or if you want to just take some time, because the journey to Casimir is still going to be a while, um, let's just take a quick break.
Now I need your answer. I want to take a little bit of time. I want to do it tonight. Um, so I don't want one to do it I'm utterly time. exhausted, and I'd one like to read tonight. a little more of this Yellow King. You told me I could get my wife back. Well, it's not going to happen overnight. If you think the solution is that easy, then you really have lost her. It will require a great deal of discipline, Ethel. So you can see this like has like pierced a lot of like Ethel's like <laughs> like armor, and he's just like. <laughs> Suki, um, Suki says, Atticus, I'd like to assist you in any way I can. Um, here, and she takes out a box that she has. She opens it up, and she pulls out like a big piece of quartz and uh, a piece of amethyst um, and oh. like oh. Bell- bells, and she ties them around her ankles. Um, oh. And she right. burns, she burns <laughs> some sage and puts it into a little like clay pot. That smells awful. <laughs> <laughs> she sits down uh, and starts meditating nearby and stops talking to you. Right. Well. All right. Perhaps and she he's like waving a hand in front of your face. Perhaps you'll. F- I'll just keep talking and maybe something will get through. And um, he's just going to, and he does want your help and he wants, because he knows he can't do it alone. And he also is, um, ever since our talk on the boat, he's much more interested in your uh, contributions now that he trusts a little bit more like your reason for being here. And so, yeah, he'll read from the books and read about this Yellow King out loud, see if anything, you catch anything he misses between the lines, as it were. And Troy, Um, I'm... I know I'm being silly with the meditation. She is really doing that, though. But uh, using my um, dream lore skills, my dream lore knowledge, and my occultism knowledge, I'd like to, like, assist Atticus with the research. Okay. Um, all right, so let's let's do some rolls here. Let's roll um, some dice. Okay, I'm going to do a, an occultism roll. Um, and... I feel like we really have all the knowledge we're going to get. I'm just going to see if there's anything between the lines that could say, warn us of a of a trap, you know, of a mental trap, of anything that is is uh, doesn't add up, or <laughs> outside of the way that everything literally doesn't add up when it comes to occultism. But is this right. something just a little bit different? S- spells to prepare weaknesses. Things? Yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. That would and be great. Su- and Suki, do you have to roll to aid, or is this a spell that you're casting? No, I mean I can. I can roll to aid. We'll make it simple. Okay. I bet I have a cool spell, but I didn't look. But no, you for f- the 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 dream lore thing that you're doing. Just roll dream lore to aid. I mean, that, my occultism is better than my dream lore. Then roll occultism. It's great. Mm-hmm. Your role playing was dream lore, though. Okay, I'll just roll my dream lore. <laughs> Crush it. Should've Come on, natural role. twenty. Oh, crack die. Oh. Well, that's an eleven, but plus thirteen. That's an aid. So plus one, yeah. To this, John, uh, is it an aid? Isn't it one of those things? It's like DC twenty is the norm, and it's but otherwise it's GM fiat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so it might be an aid. Okay. Well, that was a twenty three. So yeah. So what it was a twenty three. I'm sorry, I thought it was thirteen. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, twenty three. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm going to so take a might. plus one. Here we go. Uh, there you go. That's a thirty two. Oh, very that's good. pretty damn good. So you do see in in a lot of the books that Lal's had in his <clears throat> in his chest that you found in his room. Uh, it's a lot of the books that you were into back in the day. Uh, maybe there's even some crossover with some books. If you didn't read them yourself, you like heard of them being cited. And now you've got like the actual copies of these books that you always uh, had hoped to get. You think yeah. about that. Who was that guy whose library you went into to steal one of his uh, books? Baron Hess. Baron Hess, like Hess. He may have had, had these the dark, the, dar- the uh, not the Chain of Knights. That became the new one, but the no, the uh, other book that Atticus first went down the Tapestry dark- of Madness. The Tapestry of Madness. He had that in his safe, and Atticus went to steal it to improve the quality of his illusions. Uh, he didn't care if it was going to be a dark way to go about doing it, but he needed he needed to sell more tickets. <laughs> and, to his uh, magic and so, show. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, somebody died that night. Like it's a servant a in the show. house. I, I did forget that. Was killed. That's, that's how you during know it's that a mark break of a good show. Um, yeah, someone did die. So you've you've got access to these books now, and you see that Lyles, um 
he's obviously interested in dreams and that the, the, the majority of this research was to sort of unlock the excursion ritual. But there's also just a lot of talk of beings and powers from beyond. And so you think, as you, as you, as you flash back to remembering your conversation with the Yellow King, he was wearing like tattered curtains from the abandoned caravanserai that just happened to be yellowed from time. It's like, I'm the Yellow King, I'm the Yellow King. Hmm. But you wonder if he is a fragment of Lao's uh, imagination or, or his, uh, Lao's mind, um, that maybe Lao's sort of interest in things like perhaps the King in Yellow gave him the idea to even call himself the Yellow King. Hmm. Or maybe it's just he found a yellow curtain and wanted to be the Yellow King. Yeah. If he had found a red curtain, maybe he would have been the Red King. He certainly was not a, a an overwhelming presence. Uh, that's be yeah, that's the thing that's like always bothered me is that I, I, I feel like it would have made more an imp- of an impression on us if he had been the actual. I don't think we could have handled it. So uh, yeah, it seems likely that this is some kind of coping mechanism that another that this guy has. I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, my mind i'm like working so hard in my brain to there's something not about this mystery but there's something about this that's familiar in like in in like entertainment or media or something there's like there's something about like mash like you study something (laughs) i'm just saying you study so you study something so much and then like uh, yeah it's it's like part of you part of you becomes that thing uh anyway it's interesting yeah it's mother night are you thinking of mother night no. There's the moral of Mother Night. What's it's that? Scary. It's um. He he finally like calls it out in like a preface. He's like, you don't think all, he doesn't think all stories have a moral, but this one does. And the moral is, uh, be careful what you pretend to be, because you might become what you pretend to be. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, right along those lines. But okay. So he, he does feel pretty confident that we are dealing with a figment of, uh, or a, a fracturing of Laos's mind. But to me, what he wants to do, beyond just getting to the mad poet, which is obviously the most important thing in finding Laos, is like maybe, given a little bit more time in this knowledge and all this experience in the dreamlands, maybe Atticus can mine this fragment a little better to get it more into Lao's actual mind, you know, mm-hmm. to really get a sense of what his objective is. Because we know he wanted to do this ritual, but why? Right? We don't really know the why. Do we? Was that answered at the end of book two? or uh, Why he wanted to do the Dreamlands excursion ritual? Yeah. Like, what is he, he seeking exactly? He was seeking an audience with the mad poet because there was knowledge that he needed that only a mind such as the man right poet but for what impart. what did he want the knowledge for that you don't know exactly so he wants to try to mine this yellow king a little bit to see if he can get that okay shall we dance bump yeah. bump bump let's do it yes so yes. maybe you take a night to really dig into these books it's not something you'll be like ah, i found it and then the next night so you know you've been two days away um to the stardust augers and uh it doesn't take long before the crew is kind of bummed out again um, but at least it's not morale's bad. down. Yeah, morale's a little down. Uh, it was a cold and rainy day today, so that people have to be on deck for hours on end. Hey, feeling that shift, feeling that could Atticus, could Atticus uh, do a show? I don't think. In, I think in two months, Atticus has been so focused on his own shit that he hasn't ever done a show for this crew. Do it, uh, do it, do it, do it. And I don't think they've really seen his illusions in action before. So you, you, I imagine you approach Skywind. And she's like, "Yeah, what, uh, what, what does it involve? You like, you, you saw a woman in half. If you young. like, I could, of course, um, you can do the that. front door. But um, I, I, I don't want to spoil the show. But uh, I've, I've done many tricks in my time, and I've learned more even since I stopped entertaining." Um, it's nothing that would harm the boat. They are all illusions. Nothing it's is illusions. illusions. It's not yes, witchcraft. None of it is You're real. not going to be calling down some dark god to no, split of course the boat not. in two. 
There is no divine magic here. There is no transmutation. There is no uh, divination. I won't be looking into your minds or reading your secret thoughts. I, it is simply illusions. Hum. And, you, and do you have a, an assistant from one of your friends there? Uh, but of course. And then he uh, leaves that conversation and he goes to... Uh, Eris. <laughs> like, he's gonna go to, to Suki, but going. Eris is like off to the side. Like Suki is Suki is like doing something weird. Suki's like holding a small seed. Actually, Suki separately, and we don't have to play it out. She's setting up her uh, verdant weapon, which is uh, a small seed, and she takes ten minutes. And basically, it's actually super dope. <coughs> she can make a weapon out of this seed. She makes a whip out of it, and as an action during combat a single action, she can turn the seed into the full-size weapon and turn it back into a seed. So it's like a concealed weapon. I can add talismans and runes to it later, but she takes 10 minutes doing that. So she's busy doing that and she's not helping you, Atticus. <laughs> so he'll go to Eris. <laughs> uh, and he's like, I need um, an assistant for my oh, show. You uh, do. Would you be willing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> need to do exactly as I say. Okay. Okay, no surprises. Okay. Wear a high collar. <laughs> high collar? <laughs> my cloak has a high collar. You can't see my mouth, my other mouth, all the time. There's you can't no see my other sad. mouth all the time. <laughs> um, so just to raise their spirits a bit. I it can get rather droll working on a ship day in and day out, especially in the rain and the muck. Should I bring uh, egg? I made, I made them a pair of new red shoes. Yes, sure. Yeah. Okay. Abs absolutely. There, there is right. a precedent for this. We had a comedian on board once. Oh, uh, 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 really? Yes, it didn't go well. We we killed him, but good luck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll be fine, Eris. We'll be fine. Like to see you try. <laughs> oh, please. Are you kidding me? I entertained the Baron Hess and his uh, court and entourage. Oh, I was talking about them uh, killing us if we, if we bomb up there. No, we won't bomb. They <laughs> which, are which not Which Baroness prepared. did you entertain? Baron Hess, Ethel. Ethel. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, expect you to understand. Uh, the, the aristocratic life, Ethel, is very different from what you do in your day to day. Um, oh, so you're just saying I'm just someone who just strides and strikes and that's it. No, I hear you. I hear you. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't, sorry to be uh, uh, engaged with your art. And he just storms off. <laughs> Eris, just just let him go. He needs a moment. Me? I didn't piss him off. You gotta really like. You no, gotta, you got him all worked up sensitive. talking about his wife. So now he thinks. Well. Yeah. I'm just well, the more worked up he gets, the better he'll be in a fight. So this is good. This okay. is good. I hope so. I hope so they, backfire. they set up a little little makeshift stage uh, at the bow of the boat. They hang uh, like an old sail. Um, and uh, kind of fashion it in the front so there's a curtain and uh, the crew gathers around along with uh, the rest of you and uh, Dinky Ethel comes. sits in the front row and just sits there like this. <laughs> like Bernie Sanders at the inauguration. <laughs> front row center directly in front of you staring up. And uh, Skywin uh, comes backstage and says, uh, Dinky would like to warm up the crowd. <laughs> uh, by all means. And so she goes, ladies and gentlemen, Dinky first stumble. <laughs> and Dinky comes out. Hello, how's it going, everybody? Hello, how are you? <laughs> and uh, he points at Ethel. Uh, where, uh, where are you from, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Ethel just stares daggers. <laughs> are you, uh, are you from around here, sir? Are you married? Oh boy. You have a wife? You ever been loved, sir? <laughs> <laughs> a single tear, so it's trickle the eye on Ethel's face. A tough crowd. Give it up for Atticus! Crowd! <laughs> <laughs> While he's doing his, his crowd work. Great warm crowd work. Great yeah. crowd work. Classic. Um, yeah, Atticus just comes out and. Um, well, actually. Uh, you say give it up for Atticus Grimm, and then this is like he doesn't step up on stage. There's just, just nobody there. 
crew's like grumble, 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 grumble. and then you just hear, yeah, and you just hear this like voice from the back of the room that's like, ladies and gentlemen, like this like monstrous voice, and he's just casting ghost sound, and it's like all the way from Usulov, Atticus Grimm, and he comes up on stage to obvious huge fanfare and goes through a series of spells, starting with prestidigitation, which he had prepared, a little bit of ghost sound here and there. Uh, and then, you know, slowly working up the line to, uh, boom, all of a sudden, uh, he's dinky fuss tumble. And he's just like, bah, 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 bah. he walks up to dinky and just, you know, it's just like, hey, hey, that's Atticus. And you know, like he, he says that the other dinky's Atticus and then gets them all fired up. Uh, which one's real? You have to decide all that kind of shit. <laughs> um, he, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, he's got a ton of them, but I think. How does he close out the show? I think he's going to take a risk. I think he's going to take a risk because I think there's no true illusionist show that could end, uh, that could stay with people forever if there isn't a little bit of fear. Hmm. And he finishes the show with something no one's ever seen him do and something that he has completely drawn and learned through his experiences of uh, that he's learned so far on this adventure. And he begins an incantation and begins summoning up through the bottom of the deck a yellow mist a mist starts to rise around everyone it's and he's okay. just like you know holding his hands up and he opens up his mouth and this yellow mist starts to come out of his mouth this is what everybody sees and then everybody on deck that is watching him feels as if the deck is giving way and they are being pulled down beneath the sea and he's casting oneric mire which is like from the like the Onirigens. like it's that exact oh, oh, no sort of way. spell, yeah. Wow. And uh, it it makes you feel as if you are being pulled down into the earth, and basically uh, you make a will save, and on a failed save, you feel like you are being sucked down into the ground, and uh, a, and you get a minus ten to your speeds. You know, it's not it's not like phantasmal killer. It's not going to like make somebody go crazy, but it's just like, and on a critical fail, you uh, you like you're immobilized, and you're just like feel like you're frozen into the deck. And like you can't move, basically. Um, um, Ethel rolled a natural five. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that might actually be a crit fumble. What's your yeah. will save? Uh, plus fourteen, so it's a nineteen. You're nineteen, okay, that is not a critical fail. But yeah, you feel like you've been like slowed down, like there's water coming up through the deck, and you're being pulled down into it. And uh, and Eris has already been told about this, and this like you know, oh, it's only an illusion, you know, don't panic. But like, it feels as if he is like changing the very composition of the boat to everybody on there unless people critically succeed that's the only way they don't believe it at all i would think most of the crew would fail um including uh skywin um and uh you know ethel's already failed so there's this just this mist rising and it's causing a bit of a commotion um what was an otherwise enjoyable show um now starts to cause a little bit of panic, but people are also frozen by this mist. And you're watching this. I'm assuming, I'm assuming with the same face that you're watching this right now. There's a <laughs> glee in this <laughs> madness that's happening. But you see the mist rising, and as it does, uh, everyone that was around you starts to become obscured. And so, what starts out as maybe glee at your success um, takes on a very different feeling for you because you lose everyone in this except for a single figure in the back. And at first it looks like um, a person, um, but then you realize that's too big to be a person. And not only is it too big, the shape isn't right as well. And you see this sort of oblong shaped being. Oh no. <laughs> with a long neck several long necks with little heads on the end and what looks like claws 
for hands sticking out. And you just hear a voice in your head that you assume is coming from this being. And it says, Hello, James. Oh, God, I just got chills. <laughs> oh, my God. And he's just like, and he's like, he knows he's in front of like a whole audience. And he's just like trying to hold it together. Eris is side mouthing you, being like, hey, is this part of your thing? <laughs> <laughs> Does she see? Do you see? And he's, his eyes cast down. Do you see a creature in the back? Large, are you oblong making, in shape. She's like doing dark tendrils with your yellow thing. And she's like, are you making the dark figure in the back? <laughs> are you not? Not, not intentionally. Okay. Not intentionally. Okay. Remember what Suki said. It's happening to me. Oh, it's happening to me. Bring it back down now. We're having fun. <laughs> she's, she's still trying to manage the crowd. Bring like, it back down. He looks back up at it. James is gone. Back. James is gone. I believe it's time to come home soon. It starts to like coalesce back into the mist. Oh my God. And this Good like job. rocks Atticus. But like he is a trained performer. He knows how to keep it together on stage. Never let him see a sweat. Never let him see a sweat. He dispels the oneric mire and the mists go away and everyone realizes they were just sitting there the whole time. There was never an issue with the deck or the water or their inability to move around or the being stuck to the deck or anything like that. Ethel uh, enraged buries his hatchet in, in Atticus's chest. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to say anything. There's probably just pause as they're like looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and he just... He takes a bow and we just zoom in on his face, you know, as he's bowing down and it is just like sweat pouring oh, yeah. through his matted fur on his face and his eyes blinking over and over again, his pupils wide. And he, he, he looks back up again and bows again and then just like walks off stage, head down. Into the river. <laughs> and just jumps into the river yes. and takes the biggest <laughs> inhale he can possibly imagine. <laughs> well, it's not and a then, good no, show he just someone walks, doesn't die. He walks out of this this area right here. Let's say that he's just to the side of like one of those um, one of the cabins. <laughs> How do you get that so quick? How did you do It's a Wonderful Life, the dance scene, in two seconds? Hey, we must be I good. I love, love this idea. Must be pretty good. <laughs> be pretty good. I love this idea because I can picture you like buckling forward, and we've got like a camera shot from the ground up, looking at you like and he's covered like, in sweat. <sighs> Suki walks out. You hear clink, 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 clink. She's wearing bells on her ankles and wrists. Uh, she's like kind of like swirling her dress, and she's his heiress, and she goes. How'd the show go? Sorry, I missed it. He's leaning on like the it wall of a of, of the cabin, and Eris is back there with him, and he's like kind of hyperventilating, and he grabs at the high collar that was on his neck, and he unbuttons like two buttons, and he, he opens up his uh, collar a little bit, uh, uh, and he looks at Suki, and you see his eyes like shaking and like tears rising in them, like just like you were earlier, and he's like. It happened. What you said. My nightmare from before these times. I saw it. I saw a horrible thing I had done. Did you... Did you do something to someone? Is that what you saw? And Suki just like runs up and puts her arm around Atticus and just like gives him a hug uh, and like her hair is just like nestling into you and, and she just says whatever you saw it's not it's not real it's in the past right and he's like <sighs> and he's there's tears starting to stream down his face because he's coming sort of face to face a little bit more in this comforting moment with Suki nobody ever touches him nobody ever hugs him he's a rat and he just, he starts to get very emotional thinking about what he did. Like he attempted to steal the life of his friend because he just 
was so that his desire for success was so great that he could not accept failure and he felt that the only way to do it was in the body of his friend who wasn't a rat who could fit in with all these people and he did he performed this ritual that uh, was you know he never felt guilty about it really until this moment Uh, and yeah the tears start rolling down and he's not saying anything but you can tell but he's embracing you pretty hard and Suki says and she's like crying a little bit too uh, and she says we've all made mistakes we've all made mistakes and we can be sorry but I don't know if it changes anything and I'm sorry I'm sorry for you he pulls pulls back and starts to rebutton his collar (laughs) no you're right what's done is done it doesn't change anything the path forward is clear and for what it's worth I'm sorry for whatever happened to you as well and uh, he'll just walk away I think he needs some uh, alone time um, really to get himself right which is like stopping this sort of like guilty feeling about this remembering how run down he felt in that time and how you know James while he was a friend was also completely unsympathetic about his real situation and um, gets his mind back on course that he, the whole reason he set out on this is because he's He's meant to defy all of the limits that were put on him by other people. And uh, he's got to do it, I guess, by doing some dark fucking magic. So, so uh, he's going to have to go visit this this Yellow King. So uh, uh, does the up. morale raise on the boat at all? <laughs> <laughs> Did That's they like they the needed. show? <laughs> Ethel finds Eris sometime after the show and he's like, Hey, uh, just want to say you were... Uh, really good up there thank you it was it was a lot of fun being scary but people like it you know <laughs> yeah yeah i know uh, you were uh, you're good at that that's uh seems like that's something you're you do oh thank you i i do try okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over there now okay <laughs> see you later yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> We fade from that awkward. Yeah. <laughs> we fade from that awkward little moment. <laughs> that full is so packed with awkward moments. <laughs> we fade from that awkward little moment to all of you standing in a circle below deck on a different evening, going through the excursion ritual, passing the staircase from hand to hand, and as always, finishing with Aldo, who's just holding this giant staircase, dropping it onto the floor. And you begin walking down one by one, Suki probably apprehensively wondering if you'll just go straight where you're supposed to go this time or have another detour. Perhaps even Atticus wondering what or who you'll see on the other side. And as you start to go down the steps The wood begins to have little grains of sand on it. You can feel the sand underneath your feet until the sand covers the stairs completely and you are on the desert floor. But unlike the first time, you don't feel that oppressive heat that made you uh, have to head directly for the caravanserai for fear of you know, taking damage from being in the heat. There is no heat this time. In fact, as you arrive at this forgotten desert outpost once more, it's now nighttime when you arrive, not day. You look up and the moon here in the dreamlands looms large and close overhead dimly illuminating the sand beneath your feet 
and the abandoned caravanserai ahead. And as you stand there, looking at this building, the words of Hydrana Ibren ring through your head. And she says, and an abandoned caravanserai, which I believe will be quite changed when you return. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Dude, I don't know about next this. week <laughs> is a big week. Oh, no. <laughs> a big week. <laughs> Holy shit. It'll be eventful. I thought we could just roleplay forever and never actually have to do it. I know. <laughs> uh, I'll do a magic show. That'll stop the bad things. Like, do at least a one-hour magic show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That was fun. That was fun. Uh, Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Don't yeah, miss it. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.